has the time come to say farewell to Games Workshop? Now, perhaps you aren't familiar with Games Workshop, perhaps you aren't familiar with the Horus Heresy, with Warhammer 40k. Even if you aren't, I would still encourage you to listen to my profound insight in this video, because as we are all appreciators of Hermetic Wisdom, we know that as above, so below. So you can use this example to, to analyze other similar happenings. So basically, I'm not going to go into all too much detail here because we're going to get to the point relatively quickly. So anyway, Warhammer 40k, Warhammer Fantasy, even the old world, it's gone increasingly woke over the last few years. And now, why is this, you might ask? And you can see many examples of this. So when they revamped the old world, which I was excited for to begin with, but then they started immediately the first new novel showing Bretonian female knights and we'll get into this in a in a minute as well with female representation because it's absolutely not what it's about but first things first why is games workshop suddenly going woke or suddenly over the last few years yes one would think that it's to cater to left-wing extremists and the left-wing extremists they probably flatter themselves by believing so themselves but we can look at the major shareholders in games workshop and then we see a certain company, BlackRock. Now, what does BlackRock do, you might ask? Yes, they have a certain system in place which rewards companies for being essentially woke, to use that terminology. When I say woke, I mean extreme leftist. You can use whichever term you want. So when I say leftist in this sense, I don't mean someone who's concerned with working class rights or anything like that. We're talking about degeneracy, basically. So there is a thing called ESG, and that basically means that it's easier for a company to get loans if they are also woke. And of course, you have two ways to make money or to gain money, rather. So you have a loyal customer base or you can get loans from various institutions. And if you have a high score of ESG, you will have an easier time getting these loans. And to get a good rating here to be trusted with loans you have to implement certain policies certain woke policies so there is actually a quite brutal example of this perhaps you even remember Bud Light now I'm not a fan of bear at all and I don't mind if a bear company goes uh, it goes bad for a for a bear company because I don't think you should drink bear it's highly estrogenic so if you're a woman you can drink bear of course it can even be good for you but for a man drinking bear not so good but even so it shows how you know a policy coming from one side it is damaging to the the brand, but they do it anyway because the politics, it's more important than making money. And this is also something everyone needs to understand that for many individuals, myself included, by the way, money is not the most important thing. Your political mission is the most important thing, including the individuals who are behind this woke madness. They put their own political principles. They put that mission before any any revenue. So I don't think Larry Fink, the CEO of BlackRock, I don't think he really cares if Games Workshop loses customers. I really don't think he cares if Warhammer goes into something, transforms into something completely unrecognizable. I really don't think he cares. I don't think any of these big investment firms care at all if um, a hobby such as Warhammer it goes um, it goes bankrupt even. I don't think they care. They have a political agenda behind it. So that is something to keep in mind. And I can only say that for, um, for a businessman, a brand owner myself, I can only um, suppose it hurts a damn lot for these guys in Games Workshop to know that they have to butcher their brand to make female custodes, female space marines to transform their entire lore to accommodate for these big investment bankers. I can only suppose it hurts, because they have to do it, they have to play ball, they're being forced, they're being bullied by bigger bigger bullies in the playground to do certain things. And then they can of course comfort themselves with saying, oh we do it for these this, um, individuals who want more inclusivity, but it's absolutely not what it's about. And as I said in the beginning of this video, we'll get to it, this thing with female representation. So Bretonia, based on the Arthurian legend and medieval France, they already do have females. So they have enchantresses and uh, sorceresses and stuff like that. So they are already, you know, a natural, normal place for women in that particular faction. We also have then 
in Warhammer 40k, so this is also the same universe as the Horus Heresy, which I've recommended. So you have the Sisters of Silence, for example, and you have the Adepta Sororitas. So you have two female factions there fighting for the Imperium, so it's not about being inclusive to women. There are already plenty of women to be found in both fantasy and 40k. But it's about them destroying things for us. And I saw on Twitter yesterday something that illustrates left-wing mentality in the best possible way. And this goes for anything, really. We're only talking about Warhammer now, but you can use this as an example for everything, really. So let's have a look. And this person says, It brings me so much joy to know that you feel like all your favorite hobbies are being stripped away from you. You will never get what you think you had back, and that is hilarious. So this illustrates with perfect clarity, the left-wing mindset. And now we're talking about something quite innocent as, you know, a hobby. We're talking about games, we're talking about books, but use this as an example to something bigger, something deeper, and you have a true danger on your hands. So this is scary stuff. Believe me, you can look at the Bolshevik Revolution if you want further examples of this mentality coming into play. Then you have total chaos and carnage, truly horrifying stuff. So this is the side who celebrates... Uh, the wokeness of Warhammer. And meanwhile, us fans, been fans for over 20 years, were of course quite sad seeing this happen. So then you might ask, Great Lion, what do I intend to, what is my course of action? Because I have, of course, I have recommended the Horus Heresy. I will finish reading The Siege of Terra, but after that I will not uh, read any more Black Library books because, yeah, I don't want to be um, fed by all of this wokeness and besides the quality of the books the quality of the books it has deteriorated I'm very sad to say that and um, yeah anyway if you want to know more about the Horus Heresy check out my video I made on uh, the series I also have a reading list for it when it comes to the game itself I played a lot of Warhammer Fantasy back in the day I haven't played Age of Sigmar I actually haven't played Warhammer 40k I have painted some models so I play Warhammer Underworlds and I will of course continue to do so but I will see if I continue to sponsor Games Workshop with my money I will probably not do so. So yeah anyway it's a bit of a tragedy I'm sure most of the individuals in Games Workshop they only want to you know uh, develop good games write good books have a good fan base have fun together because it is an it's a great hobby uh, I mean I've been in it for 20 years or something on and off and it has brought me a lot of joy so it pains me to see that this fine company is being treated in this way and being forced probably against their will. Now, of course, I haven't talked to anyone in the leadership of Games Workshop, so I don't know. Perhaps they also agree with this, but I doubt that most of the of the truly passionate workers and uh, fans and uh, the, the management in Games Workshop, I don't think they appreciate what is going on. So anyway, that all being said, I will probably say farewell to the great world of... Warhammer 40k and Horus Heresy as soon as the Siege of Terra concludes. But yeah, I can say Horus Rising, that book is still a masterpiece, will always be so. And uh, even if I say farewell to Games Workshop now, I will still... The, the company and Warhammer 40k, Warhammer Old World, Horus Heresy, they will always have a, a place inside my heart no matter what happens now. And yeah, the good memories, the motivation, the gym motivation, everything like that, it, uh, it will always be with me. So... Thank you for all of these years of joy and inspiration to Games Workshop. Uh, and I say that in the most sincere way possible. And lastly, since we are on the topic, funnily enough, the one of the most commonly asked questions I get without exaggerating, it's actually what my favorite Primark is and what my favorite chapter is. So I'd say Sanguinius and the Blood Angels. So all that being said, I wish you a high Thumos day ahead. XOXO, boom.